Hello and welcome to the Business Program. Today's guest is Kevin Haywood, owner of KSH Safety Services. Kevin began as a health and safety advisor in the late 1990s, working for local authorities and Doncaster's Chamber of Commerce. He became chartered in 2003 and was named Health and Safety Consultant of the Year at the Industries IOSH Awards in 2009. Kevin spent five and a half years at Ernst & Young as their regional health and safety manager and went self-employed at the beginning of this year. Kevin's specific expertise in the health and safety training and management within call centres, contact centres and office environments is what we're especially interested in exploring today. Hi Kevin. Hello. And thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Can you start by explaining what a typical call or contact centre environment looks like and the type of risks there are for employees? Yeah, a, a contact centre is basically a large open plan office full of computers and people on telephones. Um, it's where people either phone in with a query or a problem or a, a customer or a complaint or, or it might actually be where the actual contact centre staff phone out trying to get more work or to, where there's a problem and they need to speak to the customers. Um, they are long shifts quite often. Quite often they're very stressful environments because they've got to answer so many calls in a particular length of time. And it could well be that um, because of the length of time they're sat at the computer, their posture tends to slip and it causes all sorts of problems, back problems, wrist problems, arm problems, whatever it might be, vision problems as well. What are some of the worst things you've seen as a health and safety consultant advisor going into these environments and how is this affecting the individuals both physically and mentally? Well first I will say that the industry itself has improved over the last 15 to 20 years. When I first went into health and safety the, um, the main issue was what was known as lav uh, lavatory lieutenants or lieutenants whichever the English version is and can never get them right. But, um, Basically, the managers would not allow people to go for toilet breaks unless they were on their specific break, which could be two or three hours after being sit, sat down uh, and so forth. And it was causing a lot of urinary problems mm -hmm. and, problem, and that affected all sorts of health issues and everything else as well and morale as, and that type of thing. That, thankfully, has more or less gone. There are still some contact centres, unfortunately, that do that, but it's, uh, they've learnt the lesson because of the sickness absence rates fell when they, when they changed. Um, other issues relating to it have been um, generally if there's a lot of different teams within a contact centre, mm -hmm. say for example one that I've actually worked with in the past uh, was a whole European one and each set of desks was a different language and they never spoke to each other and it felt like a bit like World War Three at times because it was uh, <laughs> the tension you could sense it and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different issues uh, as well as the main issue being posture. Um, and poor posture, poor setup at the computer, over time when you're there day in, day out, up to 12 hours a day, it can cause back problems and all sorts of other issues as well. Now depending on what you read Kevin, some would argue that call centres have really improved over the years and now have a great culture. Um, they're very sociable environments for example with good communications across teams, uh, customer complaints and distributes are few and far between and in fact staff enjoy dealing with the odd frustrated customer um, and work rewards are considered good. Yeah. Now, from your experience, you've mentioned there has been some improvements in the last 15 to 20 years. Would you agree with those claims? It depends on the contact centre, to be totally honest, but in the whole, on the whole, definitely there has been a lot of improvements. Um, for example, recent World Cup, um, I went to a contact centre where different banks of desks represented a different team. And throughout the World Cup, on a different day, they all bought food in representing that country. So it made it a bit more... It was something different from just answering calls and getting negative feedback through, through the phone calls all day, every day, which can drive anybody down, to be totally honest, but it's, it gives mm -hmm. people a bit of a boost. And it's that type of thing that they're bringing in a lot into contact centres these days, even down to the colour of the walls and uh, artwork maybe on the walls and that type of stuff. It just makes it a bit more homely. Um, many years ago, it was there was a lot of shirt and tie wearing type uh, within a contact centre, but they don't need to do that. They're not being seen by anybody. Um, so generally it's wear your own things now and it's, people are feeling more comfortable and that sort of helps 
actually improve the, the morale of the, of the staff that are working there as well. Now you mentioned the problems associated with sitting at workstations for long periods of time but that's also a common problem for office workers generally. Now what are some of the real health issues of working in this way? If you don't sit correctly in your chair, if you've not got your monitor at the correct height, uh, you will start slouching forward, you'll start sl sliding down backwards into the, into the seat as the day goes on. And if you're sat there for 12 hours at a time, obviously with breaks in between, then that is going to affect your muscles, it's going to affect your discs on your back, it's going to affect everything else. And you, you're going to end up with back pain, you're going to end up with wrist pain, you're going to end up with eye strain because if, if you can't see your screen as an example and you're leaning forward looking down, mm -hmm. you're going to get glare onto the screen as well. Uh, there's also a problem, or there has been a problem in the past, it's not as much nowadays, where um, people making a complaint would have a whistle and blow straight down and obviously if there weren't a headset it went straight into their ear and it caused all sorts of problems like that. Um, Nowadays, thankfully, the, the, the headsets have noise limiters in them, which helps reduce that, prob that sort of problem. So there's lots of different ways of, of resolving problems as well. Uh, one example, going back to the um, contact centre I just mentioned that was a European-wide one, is there was a bank of desks for um, the Dutch, and the Dutch are naturally a very tall race of people, mm -hmm. and they cannot get under easily a standard desk yeah. yeah so what they actually bought in was height adjustable desks literally with the press of a button the desk would rise to the right height mm -hmm. or lower depending on who, who sat there and that also had another knock-on effect because everybody then got those desks in that it meant that you weren't sat all day doing your work if you wanted to stand for a while while taking calls you could stand and raise, your, raise the desk and take the call stood up so that meant your posture was changing and, and things like that as well. And that reduced any stress on your back and change of posture and, and that sort of thing. It was really, really quite a positive move and okay. it actually boosted morale greatly, actually. Mm. And getting some exercise in the process exactly. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, in, you've said in your recent blog, um, Kevin, that the location of your workstation and the lighting, for example, yeah. in the office and noise levels are really, really important to productivity yeah. and individual well-being. How is this so, Kevin? If you think of it, I'll talk about noise first of all, if you think that you're in an open plan office with maybe 100, 200 people in that room, mm -hmm. all talking at the same time, you're going to get a lot of background noise. And the more background noise you've got from people talking, then eventually you're going to have to raise your voice to actually be heard and, and from the, mm -hmm. cu the customer on the end of the phone. And that causes voice problems. Um, there's also an issue that maybe too much caffeine is being drunk or pop and fizzy drinks, which also doesn't help the voice. Um, so, you know, there's campaigns going on a lot of cold sensors and contact sensors for, to drink uh, water rather than anything else, really, because that's better mm -hmm. for the throat. Um, but you can also put um, noise dampeners in particular strategic places, maybe at the end of desks and so forth, so that it actually keeps the noise down rather than lifting it and it's the, whole, the whole environment becomes noisy. So that can reduce headaches for a start, because if you've got mumbling, loud mumbling noise all day, every day in the background, you're going to get headaches and you're going to get migraines mm -hmm. and that type of thing, and that was a big issue. Um, the way desks are, are actually sat and configured as well for, for lighting levels, um, you'll, at certain times of the year, the sun will shine through a window mm -hmm. and blind certain people within that office because mm -hmm. of the way the desks are. And it's amazing how many contact centres and offices generally either don't have blinds or have broken blinds and they never get them fixed. Get them fixed, get them put on. It's mm -hmm. an easy solution that doesn't necessarily cost anything and uh, you can resolve an issue straight away. The other big issue in offices that you didn't mention then but it's similar sort of thing is temperature, mm -hmm. particularly air conditioning units. Yes. Everybody has a different threshold of temperature and it causes probably the most arguments in an open plan office or contact centre environment than anything mm -hmm. because one person's freezing cold and the next person's sweating buckets because of the way the, the aircon is focusing on particular mm -hmm. people. So a good management plan is work out who those warm blooded people are and who those cold blooded and make sure that they're sat in the right places and it does actually work, it's an easy solution, it just needs a bit of thought and mm -hmm. planning.
And I was particularly <laughs> alarmed, Kevin, at how harmful our desks can be. Yeah. Um, not only in terms of their height and their shape, um, but cleanliness. Uh, and you've said in your blog that on average, a uh, desktop harbors over 20,000 germs per square inch. And that's in addition to the germs on a keyboard, the mouse, and the worst offender, our uh, telephones, uh, where a staggering 25,127 germs can be found per square inch. Yeah, Unbelievable. It's, uh, 25,000 harmful bacteria per square inch on headsets in a lot of, in the average contact sensor. Um, there's been a lot of research on it and all over the world and they're all coming up with similar sorts of figures so it's it's quite accurate and if you think that um, that your headset is 400 times more harmful with the bacteria on it than the average toilet seat mm -hmm. that's quite terrifying and the other issue with that is contact sensors are generally shift patterns so somebody else will come in and sit in the same place you've been in mm -hmm. A lot of the time, they share the same headset, which they shouldn't do anyway. So you're harbouring and passing germs on straight into your ear, uh, which is quite frightening. Um, there is a big campaign that everybody should have their own headset and keep their own headset, and if there's a problem with it, get it replaced and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem to happen in a lot of contact centres, particularly local authority, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Um, now, there are lots of things that you can uh, buy these days as an employer yeah. to help um, staff working within these environments. What are some of the best and worst products that you've seen on the market, Kevin? Right. There are um, lots and lots of things on, on the market. There's about a thousand different designs of mouse, for example. Yeah. Um, some of them are really good. Some of them are awful. But if you think when you walk, you walk with your hands set down by your side, when you yeah. shake hands, you shake hands like so. Yeah. And then when you go and do some mouse work, you literally turn your wrist 90 degrees before you actually focus on it and move around like mm -hmm. that. Simple solution is what's known as the upright mouse and the left or right handed because the buttons are on the side and it keeps it in the handshake position. Oh. Yeah. Another thing, particularly with the wrist, um, and which is a particular problem with me, is people do seem to like having wrist rests. Wrist rests are there to rest your wrists when you're not using a piece of equipment. They've got the wrong name, a bit like laptops. You can never use a laptop on your lap. <laughs> but if you think, that if you don't have a wrist rest, you're moving your mouse from your shoulder and from your upper arm. If you put one on a, one of these wrist rests, you can't do that and you're just moving it through your wrist, which is going to cause a lot of problems. There's all sorts of veins, nerves, muscles, whatever, in a very, very thin area here. And you're going to, over time, you're going to cause all sorts of problems with it. If you need a wrist rest, don't use something like that. You don't need mouse mats these, these days anyway. But use something like this. It's called a mouse bean, and it'll attach to the back of your mouse. Mm -hmm. And it moves around with it. So you still, you've still you got the comforts of having a bit of padding, not on the desk, but you're actually using your upper arm rather than your wrist to actually do things. They're just a few examples. There's hundreds and hundreds of different things on the market for different parts of a workstation and they're just a few I've just brought along today. Wow, I've seen one of those before, that's great, <laughs> thanks Kevin. Right. Um, and recent studies, I um, want to ask you about this, uh, suggesting that there's become an increasingly common problem with arthritis um, among our 20 year olds. Now arthritis was always um, predominantly seen as something that you may catch in, in later life. Yeah. Um, and how much is, is this particular um, problem, um, you know, relating to work, work, poor working practices, or indeed the use of mobile phones, iPads, Blackberries, those sorts of things? There are a lot of issues with mobile phones and so forth. Rather than having a big keyboard, which we're used to, people are working more and more nowadays off a very tiny phone and the they're doing a lot of thumb work, they're doing a lot of finger work mm. in a very small location, repetitive, constantly. Mm. Um, and the younger the person, the more the time they seem to be spending on this, these sort of things. But businesses in general, um, bring your own devices to work, is a, it's a huge subject on its own, but um, there are a lot of businesses are allowing people to actually use their own tablets, their own whatever, mm. while they're in, in the workplace. Particularly if they're moving around, meeting various people, mm -hmm. Limit it to just looking something up, but carry on using a proper keyboard, a proper monitor and so forth if necessary. You'll reduce the chance of actually getting arthritis later in life. But you're right, there's a lot of um, younger people actually getting the early signs of arthritis at a younger age. Wow. 
I suppose we don't sit properly either and our necks are bent yeah. over and, and um, so forth. That's far. it. The, the height of the monitor is very important. Top of the screen on eye level is perfect because you're looking across, you look slightly down, so you're looking at the centre of the screen. But if you've got a laptop just on the desk, you tend to lean forward more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's going to cause problems. Wow. Be back. And in terms of taking personal responsibility uh, for our own health and, and safety, what can we all do to minimise these health issues whilst at work? Follow instructions, follow procedures that have been put in place. If you don't know why they've been put in place, ask the question. There is a reason for it. People don't put things in place for the fun of it. Uh, they're normally there to actually help protect you. Um, if you're in an office, prints are the furthest printer. That's what I always do then you, you're getting up to walk and you're stretching a little bit for those few seconds that you walk into your printer. Um, take about five minutes away doing another task, not necessarily having a break. Um, the regulations say have a break from your computer every five minutes and a lot of every hour uh, for, for five minutes. But um, it, that's not what it means. It means a break from looking at the computer, working on the computer. So you're doing something else. So you're, you're moving around and you're, you're stretching your muscles and so forth. It's mm -hmm. simple things but they, uh, they make a huge difference. They don't cost anything. Sure, change is as good as rest, exactly. as they yeah. say. Well, thanks, Kevin. That's been incredibly useful and insightful today, and uh, thanks for coming to join us. No problem, thank you very much. Now, that's all we have time for on today's show, but do join us again next time on The Business Programme.